The Lincoln County War was a conflict that shook the 19th century New Mexico territory and became a defining moment in the state's history. At the heart of this bloody feud were two rival cattle barons, Lawrence Murphy and James Dolan, who owned the store in Lincoln County, the Murphys and the Dolan Mercantile and Banking. In the early 1870s, Lincoln County was the largest county in the nation, covering a fifth of New Mexico's territory. With Murphy and Dolan Mercantile and Banking monopolizing trade in the county, controlling prices, and virtually having a hand in nearly every part of the economy, the merchants and their allies, including local law enforcement, were known as The House. Pretty cool name. The merchants had influential territorial ties to officials in Santa Fe and secured several lucrative contracts with the military at Fort Stanton. However, for small farmers and ranchers in Lincoln County, the merchants and their allies were a hated presence, forcing them to pay high costs for their goods while accepting low prices for their cattle. The arrival of John Riley into Murphy and Dolan Mercantile and Banking business changed the dynamic of the county. Soon, another man named John Tunstall entered the picture, setting up a rival business called H.H. Tunstall & Company. Tunstall, a wealthy 24-year-old English cattleman and banker, had the backing of a large ranch owner named John Chisholm, who owned more than 100,000 head of cattle. The tunstall mcsween faction became a thorn in Murphy and Dolan's side, and they were not afraid to use their considerable wealth and power to rid themselves of their rivals. In February of 1878, the House obtained a court order to seize some of Tunstall's horses as payment for an outstanding debt. When Tunstall refused to surrender the horses, Lincoln County Sheriff William Brady formed a posse led by a deputy, William Morton, to seize them. After protesting the presence of the posse on his land, Tunstall was shot in the head on February 18th of 1878. This incident started what became known as the Lincoln County War. The murder of John Tunstall was a turning point in the conflict. The most famous outlaw of all, Billy the Kid, who had been recruited by Tunstall as a cattle guard, was deeply affected by the murder, claiming that Tunstall was one of the only men who treated him like he was a free-born white. That's his quote, not mine. After Tunstall's funeral, Billy swore, I'll get every son of a bitch who helped kill John if it's the last thing I do, end quote. Adding fuel to the fire, it was rumored that Tunstall had been murdered on the orders of James Dolan and Lawrence Murphy. Adding fuel to the fire, it was rumored that Tunstall had been murdered on the orders of James Dolan and Lawrence Murphy. However, Billy would not be able to immediately exact his revenge. Along with Fred Waite, he was briefly jailed by Sheriff William Brady. After his release, Billy soon joined a posse led by Dick Brewer, Tunstall's ranch foreman, called the Famous Regulators. The group's primary aim was to hunt for Tunstall's killer, William Morton. The Regulators were a small, tight-knit group of men who were determined to avenge the death of John Tunstall and bring his killers to justice. In addition to the famous Billy the Kid and Dick Brewer, the group included men such as Josiah Doc Scurlock, Charlie Baudry, and Tom O'Foyle, all who had been friends and associates of Tunstall. Regulators were a force to be reckoned with, and they soon began striking fear into the hearts of their enemies. They were skilled gunmen and horsemen, and they were relentless in their pursuit of justice. They rode across the county, tracking down members of the posse that had killed Tunstall and leaving a trail of, of destruction in their wake. On March 9th of 1878, in the foothills of Captain, along the murky Blackwater Creek, a heinous massacre took place. The regulators, on the third day back of their journey to Lincoln, claimed that they were forced to kill three men, men named McCluskey, Morton, and Baker. The regulators allege that Morton murdered McCluskey and attempted to escape with Baker, which led to their fatal end. However, their story was met with skepticism as Morton was believed to be a close friend of the group and it seemed improbable that he would turn on them. The gruesome discovery of 11 bullet holes in Morton's body and 11 bullet holes in Baker's body only served to fuel the doubts that the regulators' accounts were false. It is wildly believed that the regulators were seeking to silence their opponents and murder the trio in cold blood. 
The violence continued to escalate in Lincoln County. Sheriff Brady, alarmed by the regulators' continued actions, sought assistance from the Territorial Attorney General, Thomas Cantron. Cantron sent the issue right on up to the Territorial Governor, a man named Samuel B. Axtell. The governor decreed that the regulators' actions were illegal and that only served to intensify the already tense situation. With a man named Windman having his status of Deputy U.S. Marshal revoked, Sheriff Brady and his men became the sole law enforcement officers of all of Lincoln County. It's a huge county, the biggest at the time of the whole country. On April 1st of 1878, the regulators, consisting of French, McNabb, Middleton, Waite, Brown, and Billy the Kid, gathered behind Tunstall's store, preparing to launch a vicious attack on Brady and his deputies. As chaos ensued on the main street of Lincoln, Brady was shot numerous times and met his end. Deputy George W. Hindman was also fatally shot. French and McCarty broke cover and raced to Brady's lifeless body, maybe to obtain the arrest warrant they had for McSween, or to, ret- to retrieve McCarty's rifle, which had been confiscated during a previous arrest. However, a surviving deputy, a man named Billy Matthews, managed to wound both of them with one bullet that passed through both men. French's injury was so severe that he had to seek shelter. Wyndman's role in the incident remained unclear because he said he was feeding Tunstall's dog at the time. At Blazer's Mill, a sprawling complex owned by a dentist and complete with a post office, general store, and multiple adobe structures, the regulators had gathered to feast at Mrs. Godfrey's restaurant just three days after their latest kill, Sheriff Brady and Deputy Hinman. Unbeknownst to them... A man named Buckshot Roberts, a rancher trying to stay out of the ongoing war, had come to collect his check and was shocked to see the regulators dining nearby. Despite Frank Coe's attempts to convince him to surrender, Roberts refused, fearing for his life. Brewer, growing impatient, orders some of his men to take Roberts into custody, but the old gunman fired his Winchester and wounded several of the regulators, including John Middleton and George Coe. In the ensuing chaos... Buckshot Roberts retreated to a nearby building and barricaded himself in with his 5070 government Springfield rifle, which he had required from Dr. Blazer himself, Blazer's Mill. The regulators, shaken by the turn of events and their wounded comrades, tried unsuccessfully to get Roberts to come out. Brewer circled around the building and opened fire on the fortified adversary, but Buckshot Roberts fired back and struck him in the eye. This ultimately killed Roberts the next day, and he and Brewer were actually buried side by side near the big house where the fateful gunfight took place. The violence of Lincoln County War had reached a fevered pitch, and there was no end in sight. After Brewer's death, the regulators were thrown into kind of some disarray until they elected McNabb as their new captain. Unfortunately for McNabb, his reign was short-lived. On April 29th of 1878, A posse led by Sheriff Pepin and made up by notorious Jesse Evans' gang and the Seven River Warriors engaged in a fierce shootout with McNabb and two other regulators, Saunders and Frank Coe, at Fitz Ranch. The air was filled with sounds of gunfire as the two exchanged shots, but in the end, McNabb fell dead while Saunders was badly wounded and Coe was captured. The aftermath of McNabb's death was chaotic. The next day, four members of the Seven Rivers Posse were found dead in Lincoln. Though the regulators were blamed, no one could prove their guilt. Meanwhile, Frank Coe escaped from custody with the alleged help of Deputy Sheriff Wallace Ollinger, who reportedly gave him a pistol. The iron-clad regulators then assumed defensive positions in the town of Lincoln, trading shots with Dolan men and even members of the U.S. Army Cavalry. In the chaos, a Dolan man named Dutch Charlie was wounded by George Coe's rifle fire with reckless actions. The regulators had earned themselves a set of new enemies. But the regulators refused to back down. They continued their mission to bring justice to those who wronged them. The tensions between the two sides reached a boiling point on July 15th of 1878, when the regulators found themselves surrounded in Lincoln by the Dolan Murphy Seven River Cowboys. The regulators were holed up in two different positions, the McSween House and the Ellis Store. 
The two sides exchanged gunfire for three long days, during which time a defender of the McSween house, Tom McCullens, was killed by a stray bullet. The regulators were determined to hold their ground, and some even left their positions to chase Dolan men into an outhouse with rifle fire. The regulators' luck finally ran out when U.S. Army troops arrived, pointing literal cannons at the Ellis store in their position. Billy the Kid and Doc Scurlock and their men fled from their positions, leaving those in the McSween house to their fate. The Dolan men set the house ablaze on July 19th, and the flames quickly engulfed the building. Susan McSween and the other women and children were given safe passage out, but the men inside continued to fight the fire. The tension escalated and a close quarters gunfight erupted, leading to the deaths of Alexander McSweed, Bob Beckwith, and Harvey Morris, McSween's law partner. In the confusion, three Mexican regulators managed to escape to rendezvous with the ironclad members. The Battle of Lincoln had become with a devastating end, with the regulators left to mourn their losses and the Dolan faction declaring victory. The Lincoln County War may have officially ended, but its bitter legacy continues to simmer in the hearts and minds of those who survived it. Billy the Kid, the most famous regulator and most famous outlaw, I would say, of all time, became a fugitive and fled with his remaining Conrads, including Bowdry, O'Fold, and Dave Rudabaugh. They embarked on a life of crime, rustling cattle, and committing other felonies as they evaded law. As most of us know, Pat Garrett, the sheriff, tracked them down and ended up killing Billy the Kid um, at Fort Sumner in New Mexico. And the death of Billy the Kid really marked the end of an era and a brutal reminder that there is still violence after the Lincoln County War. Even though the Lincoln County War ended and regulators were killed off and outlaws were also killed, um, there was some legislation passed because of how brutal this war was. President Hayes signed the Posse Commodus Act into law, which would have prohibited the use of federal troops for domestic law enforcement. But Hayes invoked the Insurrection Act of 1807, allowing federal troops to intervene. However, the war achieved little beyond sowing seeds of distrust and hostility amongst the locals. The death of Murthy from cancer brought some closure to the conflict, but did really did little to heal the wounds. Susan McSween, Tunstall's widow, hired an attorney to pursue charges against Dolan and the others. She also worked toward amnesty for the regulators. On the first anniversary of Tunstall's murder, Billy Campbell and Evans killed her attorney, Huston Chapman, and fled the territory. Dolan, who was allegedly involved in the murder, was indicted but later acquitted. Dolan eventually acquired all of Tunston's property and lived on his ranch until his death in 1898. On the other hand, Susan McSween, who inherited land after the war, established a ranch in Three Rivers, New Mexico, and became a prominent cattle rancher. Her holdings grew to some of the largest in the territory, averaging between 3,000 and 5,000 head of cattle. She died a very wealthy woman in 1931 at the age of 85, and her legacy is a reminder of the turbulent times of the Lincoln County War. The legacy of this war lives on today. Many historians consider this to be one of the defining conflicts of the American Wild West. It was a time of lawlessness and violence. A time when men were killing to risk everything for honor and revenge. And although the war itself was brief, its impact was felt throughout the regions for years to come. <laughs>